first year I played football, um, I played running back. I went out and scored like, you know, 50 touchdowns in a year. Our team went undefeated all the way to the championship game, and I just kind of knew uh, then that football was a possible avenue for success for me. Going into my ninth grade year, I'm introduced um, to marijuana, I'm introduced to alcohol, I'm introduced to uh, sex. This is a 14-year-old kid uh, dealing with this stuff, and I didn't have a father figure around to teach me, you know, what all that meant. All I had was to look to were the guys in the streets, which was drug dealers, guys who had criminal records, and you know, that was with my heroes, you know. I was looking up to those guys. So I just figured I was supposed to do what they did. I wanted to show them that I wasn't scared, that I wasn't uh, afraid to be a bad boy or whatever. I just wanted to impress them. I tried to jack um, another kid for his wallet. I tried to steal his wallet in the hallway, and I ended up getting in trouble and getting um, expelled from school. I remember my mom calling me on the phone and just hearing her brokenness when she answered the phone. You know, just like, Demario, what have you done? And when she said that, it was almost to the point of, you have messed up your life. And I remember uh, being out running the streets with some of my friends, and we were breaking in cars. I punched the window, and I cut my arm up. And I have this uh, serious gash in my arm. And I felt like this was the first time I heard an audible voice from God. And he said, that's strike number two. The first strike was you getting kicked out of school. The second strike is you almost killed yourself tonight. If it would have been a few inches down, I could have gashed my wrist and died that night. It scared me to the point of, from the rest of my junior and my senior year, I cleaned up my act. I get to college and, you know, I've been cleaned up my act, but the fruit of my life still isn't changed. I get back and I'm a, all of a sudden I'm at this college and now I'm a small fish in a big pond. So I feel like I gotta prove myself all over again. So I go back to drink and I go back to smoke and I go back to party and, and I land myself in jail. We stealing groceries out of Walmart. And I just remember looking around and like, whatever I'm trying to do with my life, it isn't working. I had a chance to make it out and now my coach can take my scholarship and I'd be sent back home. And I, I messed up my opportunity before I even played a snap on the field. Fortunately, the coach did not kick me off the team. He gave me another chance. Cause a little while later, our team chaplain who I've been going to Bible studies with, he started to spend time with me in the Word. He was talking about, you know, these radical ideas that I had never even thought about. And then he started to show me in the Bible that matched exactly what he was saying. And I never had looked at the Bible in that light. A, a good tree can't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. And he was talking about, this is talking about your heart. So my whole theory with God was, at the end of the day, God, you know I got a good heart. Well, this was showing me that I had a bad heart because nothing but bad fruit was coming from my life. But then he told me something that was reassuring and encouraging. He said, God will take out your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And that night I went home and I was scared and I just prayed. It was the most sincere prayer I had ever prayed. I said, God, I need a new heart. That's all I said, God, I need a new heart. And the next day I was hoping that everything would change. I woke up and by the end of the day I was doing a lot of the same stuff I had been doing. And I went to him and I was like, man, you said that God would give me a new heart if I asked. He said, if you ask for a new heart, God will honor it and God will give it to you. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but he's gonna give it to you. The message started to resonate and I started to understand why Jesus had to die on the cross. He had to pay for those sins. And until we get a new heart, we can't fix what's coming out of us. And that God wants to come inside of us and clean us so that he can draw us back to himself. And, and it was like he was taking the scales off my eyes. At that moment, he removed the taste of alcohol from my mouth. He didn't remove marijuana and sex right then. But I said, God, you're the Lord of my life. And I'm gonna choose to serve you. When you wanna move these things, you will. And he did a little bit later. Um, he removed marijuana and then uh, I was in an imperial relationship for five years. God broke it. He was like, it's time to get out of this. And I got out of that relationship. For two years, I walked in purity. I dated my wife and then we were married a year and a half later. And that was the first time I'd ever did a relationship the right way. And to say that I've done that now and then look at the, the benefits of uh, a blessed relationship and our marriage of after four years and our, our beautiful children, just to see that the fruit that's come from it, you just understand God is a God of order, and when we do things in His order, He can bless them more. I let go and I said, God, I'm trusting you. I don't know where you're gonna take me. And He's brought me closer and closer to Him. 